On behalf of the U.S. Forest Service, it is a pleasure to be here. I'm glad uh, that Glyphic invited us to be part of the panel. And to all the members of Glyphic, truly over the last few years, we have built some, some pretty good working relationships with those Glyphic members. Um, the U.S. Forest Service in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota has about 8 million acres of land, just a little under 8 million acres of land. And one of the earlier panels, one of the real good questions, of what are we doing in the future? And one of the questions was about habitat management. Truly, habitat management is going to be key, and that's one of the key reasons that working with Glyphwick over these next few years is going to be that much more important for us, as well as all of you out in the audience. For us, when we first developed the MOU, we won't go into the history, actually I was going to go, but I'm not now going to go into the history of the MOU. When we first developed the MOU, one of the things that we would do is we would come and get back with the, the Voight Task Force, the members from the various tribes get back with members, and start talking about how to implement the MOU. And George, this isn't an insult, but one of the greatest things was when we came in there, one of the best things about being from the Forest Service is we weren't part of the Wisconsin DNR. <laughs> and that was always a very good thing at that time. And that's not an insult, George, it was just the reality of the times. Uh, one of the things is we started to implement the MOU, we really realized that we in the Forest Service were, I used this word before, but we're almost arrogant. We had been managing these lands for 100 years. So we really knew a lot about it in our minds, but you know, why would we want to start working with some other people? Well, as we, as we start to learn and mature, let's say, uh, we learned that other people have been managing those lands maybe a little bit longer than we had, maybe hundreds of years longer than we had. And there were benefits. One of the toughest things for us was to get our own people to realize that there were other people out there that would, we could work with, we could learn from, we could help, to manage those lands in a way that was beneficial to the, the tribal members, to the resources, and still we're not doing anything wrong for the American public that we represent as well. As we moved along through this, we we attempted in the beginning, how do we get I'll back up, how do we get our folks to really buy into this? And one of the key things we had at the time is, is the managers, uh, the folks that the fourth supervisor level, the regional office level, stuff like that. They were in, they bought into this, but how do we get our folks actually buying into it? We did training, we did things like that. We started working more with, with the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, with the tribal wardens, with the Glyphwick wardens. As we worked, it didn't take much then. People started realizing we had the same mutual interests. That arrogance, and, and that's my word, it's, it's not everybody in the Forest Service was arrogant, maybe it was just me, but that, that arrogance went away. And we truly learned that working with those folks was to our benefit. And we, we've done so much. I, I think of just in the recent times, the wild rice plantings that we've done, combined Forest Service, tribal members, things with uh, monitoring harvest, monitoring species, even working with Dr. John Gilbert has been a treat. <laughs> it has been, truly. We have done cooperative law enforcement things that have been phenomenal. This year, Fred Molson alone, worked with youth and bringing them to education camps within the Forest Service. Those are those are things that we hadn't done in the past. We're working to hire tribal members. We're working with the various tribes as we have openings to try to recruit tribal members because they have a lot of the same interests. One of the things is that we can do, and I remember Tom Olson probably 10 years ago or more said, how are you going to work to help us keep our youth around here? There isn't a lot to keep the young people around here. And he said, you guys are one of the only agencies that can that are around here. Uh, the DNR was too, but he didn't mention the state DNR at that time. But, but truly, we were one of the only agencies around that we weren't hiring. We were cutbacks, pretty severe cutbacks and stuff like that. We've, we've got a lot of people that are, like me, getting older in our organization that are leaving. So we are attempting to, to reach out to recruit folks like that. And that's one of the, the key things that we can do. If you're interested in, in natural resource opportunities, the Forest Service is one of those sources and I urge you to talk to your local Forest Service people. For whatever tribe, just talk about opportunities because we have those opportunities.